All right, guys, now that power management is much more important than ever before in Star Citizen, I want to show you how I've set that up to work with a hat switch on a joystick. The reason I'm using a hat switch is because it's very convenient. It's located right on the head of a joystick, so you don't have to move your hand around uh, when you're in tense situations and you want to be able to use that. I want to use that power management to the most effective use possible. Um, I'm dealing with a five-way hat switch on the Constellation Delta here. It's up, down, left, right, and push. Some other hat switches might be just four-way. So uh, just up, down, left, and right. No, no push. So how do you get a triangle to map to a hat switch? Because there's three directions you can move the power. So you can drag on the MFD exactly where you want to move your power distribution. But um, using the MFD in combat, you know, in other tense situations, it's not gonna be that convenient to have to take your hand off existing controls and use your mouse or take your hand away from actually controlling the ship at the same time. So that's why you wanna have it on like a hat switch when, in, when you're using a joystick setup. So the way that I have mine set up is that I'm trying to match the directions on the power triangle as closely as possible to the hat switch. So, for example, if I move the hat to the left, that'll move power towards weapons. And if I move the hat to the right, that'll move power towards shields. And if I move the hat down, it'll move power to engines. Now, if you have a four-way hat, then you could use pressing up on the hat to reset to center. So that would bring all of your power back to 33, 33, and 33 in weapons, shields, and engines. Or if you have a five-way hat, you can use the push feature to bring it back to center. So for example, if I had moved all my power to weapons, and I want it to recenter power, I could push on the hat and that would reset power to center. Now with a five-way hat, that means you're going to have one extra direction that you can bind to something. Now you could bind it to all sorts of different other functions, um, but to keep it sort of consistent with the power management, um, I've actually bound it to basically anti engines since up is the opposite direction of down on the hat and that just feels a little bit more natural to me so if I push up on the hat in this configuration it takes power away from engines you can see going down and going up so what we'll do is we will take a look at the actual key bindings for this so all the key bindings for power management and the triangle now are all under the vehicle's power triangle assignment. And you can see how I have the key binding set up here. Now you can use these uh, increase tap and set to max hold or decrease tap set to min hold. These ones will, if you hold the key down after a short period, it will put all power towards whatever that system is. So in the case of weapons, it would do all power to weapons. I don't really like that one personally. You might find that it works better for you. Um, I prefer to do it in little short increments, and I find that there's not a lot of speed savings by doing it that way. You could set up something else to separately set to max or min on different systems just to get some additional speed, but I prefer to sort of like do uh, like three three taps, which I find is is basically the same speed. Now this is the way that the decrease works for the engines. So you can see engines decrease, 
button 18, so that would be the uh, pushing up on the hat in order to get that. So that uh, that's how I have it all configured. But you can, as you can see here, there's tons of options in order to get it uh, dialed in just the way that you just the way you like you like it. Um, they actually did a good job with the number of key binds in order to properly set this up. So it's really good. So as to why you want to manage your power now, well, with capacitors, when you drain out your weapon systems, power to weapons determines how fast those weapon systems will recharge. Basically giving you ammo to your energy weapons. If you increase power beyond 33%, then it will actually give you a higher ammo cap on your weapons. You can see the ammo cap going up on the weapons there on the right. So as you increase more and more power, not only do you get more ammo, but you get faster recharge. You can see here, the recharge rate is much quicker. As for shields, I'll disable the shields here for a moment so you can see. So shields regen based on the power that you put into them. So if we put more power, the regen will start picking up. You can see it going faster and faster and faster. Additionally, when you go over 33% on your shields, your shields are able to absorb more damage to begin with as well. And finally, it comes down to engines. So when you use boost, which is basically the old afterburner, you're going to drain out the boost capacitor. You can see that on the left there. It's draining down slowly as I'm boosting. And the more acceleration, the more the boost will drain. When I release boost, there's a delay between it charging back up. If I increase power to engines, the boost will refill faster. And additionally, any power over 33% into the engine systems will cause the boost to drain out slower to begin with. So even if the only thing you end up using the power triangle for is just to get out of atmosphere faster, then you'll want to use it to put power into engines. You don't necessarily have to manage the power triangle, but if you're trying to eke out the last you know, few percentage of performance out of your ship, then you'll want to use the power triangle to your fullest advantage. It's especially true with weapons, because I can increase power to weapons to get that cap for an initial strike. You can see there I have 20 shots normally, going up to 24 in the MVSAs when I increase power to weapons. And when I fire these weapons, if I reset power, the cap goes down, but I still have the same number of shots overall from the beginning of when I started firing. So managing and coordinating changes on the power triangle is what's going to maximize your ability to do things and to be effective. So that's why we're having it bound to something like a hat switch to be able to quickly make changes to the power triangle is something that's really important. You need something that is very snappy, easy to reach, and is going to give you the ability to change it on the fly regardless of where your hands are. So that's why I'm recommending or get that power triangle bound to something like a hat switch that's really easy to activate. Alright guys, that's it for this one. Hope that helps.